All right, let's look at another questions. Remember, for those who has not seen my other videos, these are NBME style questions written by our medical students, and I'm just giving my input and suggestions to it. And uh, just for the learning sake, there's nothing intended out of it. And we will review the questions together and I'll give you my input. I haven't read these questions before, so we're doing it together for the first time. And uh, here's a question. A 30-year-old woman, so it's a female who is 30, young female, so there has to be something crazy. Can, cannot be something simple, is brought to the hospital by her husband with a chief complaint of vision loss and confusion. You know, just quick word here. There is a lot of um, words that, that are unnecessary, so we try to make stem short. This is a very long stem. It is not uncommon, but, you know, we would prefer not to have such a long stem if there is information that is un, unrelated. So if bringing into the hospital by her husband has any implication on the answer or the stem later on, then it's a good information to put there. If, although in real life, this is how it happens. But again, as I've mentioned in my previous videos, the stems are not written to reflect our real life. They are written to just test the medical knowledge. And sometimes we actually shave off things from real life, which will cause confusion because in real life, you can go back and ask more information from the patient, get more history, do an examination, do more tests, have a follow-up examination, a follow-up visit, and so on and so forth, which we do not have the opportunity to do here. All right, so the, the patient is presenting with chief complaint of vision loss and confusion. So, you know, very serious problem in a 30-year-old female. Uh, her husband reports over the last three weeks, she has suffered from progressive nausea, headache, vertigo, and double vision. So, you know, something really bad is going on. Three weeks on site. And again, it's a little unusual she's presenting so late with such bad symptoms of progressive nausea, headache, vertigo, and double vision. She denies any alcohol, tobacco, or drug usage. Her current medications are famotidine, cyanocobalamin, and folic acid. So just over-the-counter medications. And I think they're adding husband there in the stem because the patient may not have a reliable historian. She has confusion. Past medical history is significant for an upper respiratory illness three months ago and gastric sleeve procedure two months ago. Now we're really getting some interesting information here. So an upper respiratory illness three months ago. So that could have triggered something which would be autoimmune or para-infectious and gastric sleeve procedure two months ago, which is unusual that a month after a breastfeeding infection, they went ahead and did such a major surgery, but they did a gastric sleeve procedure. Now they could be whole vitamin absorption issues, rapid weight loss, rapid weight loss and so forth. And she has lost 60 pounds of weight. Oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah, the rapid weight loss and all issues that come along with that. That, by the way, also includes some pinch nerves. So nerves that were cushioned by the fat Suddenly are exposed, and because of certain behaviors, those nerves were under pressure, but the fat cushion was helping them, and now that fat is gone, and now they start getting these compression neuropathies. So that, you know, side note. On exam, she's found to be somnolent, so she's sleepy but arousable with a voice easily uh, and is able to follow simple commands. So remember, there are four stages of um, unarousability. So somnolence is one, and then there will be um, more deeper than that, where they need a lot more stimulation to be aroused. Uh, and then the final will be comatose. So fully awake, somnolent, and I'm forgetting the word for the third one, and then the fourth one will be comatose, where that even with the stimulation, they are not able to be aroused, and there will be the comatose. Let me think what was the third one. Awake, somnolent, uptended. So uptended will be the third stage where they can be aroused, but with significant stimulation, sometimes painful stimuli. And comatose is that when they're not able to arouse at all. And she follows simple command. She's disoriented to both place and month. So she doesn't know the place and she doesn't know the month. Uh, her vital signs are 98, 91, 18, you know, 8. Normal, normal field of exam reveals visual ability to light perception only. So significant visual loss, bilateral ptosis. Oh, wow. And horizontal beating nystagmus. Horizontal beating nystagmus. So she has a really bad brainstem injury. Multidirectional conjugate gaze palsy. So that is very severe um, involvement of brain stem and nerves. And she has bilaterally absent patellar reflexes and diminished sensation of temperature, vibration, pit break, and proprioception in both lower extremities. Oh my God, that's a disaster. Bilaterally absent patellar reflexes and diminished sensation of temperature, vibration, pin prick, and proprioception. She is noted to have a wide base gait with short steps. And motor strength is five out of five in all extremities, which will be very unusual that she has such a severe 
sensory neuropathy. She has absent patellar reflexes, which now I'm assuming is um, absent because of the sensory deficit. So afferent defect, not efferent, and has a normal strength. You know, this this is highly unusual. Something very broad is happening and involving her brain stem is involving her vision. So optic nerves is involving her uh, uh, conjugate, she has conjugate gaze palsies in multi-direction. She is horizontal debating nystagmus. She has uh, significant sensory neuropathy to both anterolateral and posterior pathways. So proprioception and temperature, two different pathways uh, in the lower extremities. But she has no loss of strength, which will be very unusual. What is the most likely diagnosis? So what can cause these combination of symptoms? So multiple sclerosis is very, very reasonable to consider. She's 30 old. Uh, she had a respiratory illness and a major surgery that could have triggered that startup or to be in process that she was going to start anyways. But sometimes stresses like these on the body can bring it out. So an autoimmune multiple sclerosis, multiple sclerosis is multiple lesions spread all around. It's a three weeks of her history. So it, it can cause brainstem lesions. It can cause cerebellar lesion, causing vertigo, double vision, headache, nausea. It can cause spinal cord lesion, but that's where now the problem is that although she has the sensory deficit of the spinal cord, it is not in a spinal cord pattern. She had lower extremity sensory loss in both extremities for both interlateral and posterior pathways, but no motor deficit. So that is a sensory neuropathy presentation and not a spinal cord presentation. Spinal cord, you're expecting to have some asymmetry is expecting to have in multiple sclerosis, upper and lower involvement. You're expecting to have some strength involvement, some brisk reflexes, uh, in addition to a diminished reflexes, which is possible at the level of lesion. But below the level of lesion, there should be some brisk reflexes uh, there present. And um, and then she's noted to have a white based gate which detects here. So multiple sclerosis is possible, but this whole spinal cord thing and lower extremity goes against it. So presuming that the stem, every information is a useful information for your answer, uh, we will not pick multiple sclerosis for this patient. Now, vitamin B12 deficiency is possible. She had rapid weight loss, a gastric sleep procedure three months ago, uh, and now she's having peripheral neuropathy and she's having brainstem involvement. But here again, is a problem. The classic presentation of vitamin B12, acute vitamin B12 deficiency is the subacute combined degeneration of cord or SCD. And subacute combined degeneration of cord is basically neuropathy and spinal cord disease. Now she has a brain stem disease and she has cranial nerve involvement, and which you know goes against vitamin B12 deficiency. It's not a classic B12 deficiency presentation. B1 deficiency, along with B12 deficiency, can do this mix of presentation. Now you have a thiamine deficiency causing the nystagmus and, and conjugate gaze palsy. Uh, and, and visual problems in a and confusion and memory problems and peripheral neuropathy, and now you can say a combined B1 and B12 deficiency, and other vitamin, multivitamin deficiencies can present this way, otherwise it's very unusual. Guillain-Barre syndrome is possible. The Guillain-Barre syndrome is an ascending paralysis. Guillain-Barre syndrome classically does not cause confusion, does not cause headache or vertigo, does not cause cranial neuropathies, but then there are variants of Guillain-Barre syndrome. There's, for example, Miller-Fisher syndrome, which is actually listed as E, which is again a big no-no. You cannot have two similar diseases or two related diseases in the answer. It's either Guillain-Barre or Miller-Fisher because Miller-Fisher variant is a variant of Guillain-Barre syndrome. So that's why you cannot put GBS because that covers Miller-Fisher syndrome also. So Miller-Fisher variant of GBS. So there is a lot of things that don't fit with it, although loss of reflexes can be seen. It's classic, but it's only lower extremities. There is no sense of ascending paralysis here. There is respiratory illness three months ago, which could have triggered Gyabare, but it's a little late after the illness. Usually the trigger is more quicker and closer um, to in the respiratory illness. And then there is no progression of symptoms over the three weeks that have been reported. So Gyabare is a slowly progressive ascending paralysis, and there is no progression of symptoms reported here. And after three weeks, she still has only lower extremity involvement, and she has no weakness. So th that also strongly goes against Gyabare. Gyabare is a mixed motor and sensory neuropathy, polyneuropathy neuropathy ascending. And Wernicke encephalopathy. And Wernicke encephalopathy will be the time and deficiency. And again, you cannot put vitamin B12 deficiency. And then Wernicke encephalopathy in the answers, you should say vitamin B1 deficiency. Or you should say Wernicke encephalopathy and subacute combined degeneration of card, which are both vitamin deficiencies, but now they're the disease names. And Wernicke encephalopathy, you can have the visual problem. 
uh, and you can have time indeficiency, you can have memory problems and confusion, acute onset, but then the vertigo, the headache, the progressive nausea uh, is again un unclear unless you're saying that the progressive nausea in someone with this gastric sleep problem led to a vitamin deficiency because she kept throwing up her vitamins that she was taking orally. Now, but that will be a huge curveball and a trick question. And some level of trickery is acceptable in questions, but you know this may be a little too much of a deception to say that someone with gastric sleeve was expected to be on vitamin, shouldn't have vitamin deficiency, uh, but they developed nausea and now they are vitamin deficient because they were nauseous and throwing up. And they may be nauseous because this, the procedure was overdone and they have too narrow of a sleeve on gastric stomach and that's why they're nauseous and they cannot keep any food down. And then last is myasthenia gravis, which is unlikely and possible, although there is double vision and doses, which is a classic presentation of myasthenia gravis. And the question writers may have thrown that in there to really confuse you. Uh, but again, um, there is now no other diurnal variation that you expect with myasthenia gravis. There is no tiredness with excessive activity. And then why would you expect myasthenia gravis in someone who just has a stomach surgery done and things like that? Again, although in real life it's possible, but in a STEM, it's not a real life. It's more of a preci precise version of reality with all of these confusing elements shaved away or removed away uh, for the question. So I'm a little confused here. If I have to pick one, I would go from a go. My real answer in real life would be a really bad uh, variety of MS. So there are uh, variants of MS which present with very large necrotic big lesions, very rapid onset. Uh, vision loss to only light perception is very concerning here, which again, uh, will be, you know, again, their bilateral optic neuropathy, very, very unusual, but it, it could be the most extreme severe case of multiple sclerosis onset I've ever seen. Uh, and uh, it's called bellows sclerosis. For those of you who are interested, there is a variant where there's large, big necrotic lesion, almost tumor effective kind of a multiple sclerosis. And it's multiple lesions, huge and significant involvement. But what does that fit with MS is the spinal cord pattern, the lower extremity, lack of weakness, only sensory loss and both anterior and posterior loss is a neuropathy pattern of weakness and neuropathy with this presentation is very unusual. So because it's a mixture of neuropathy and central involvement, I'm going out on a limb here and saying that it's probably vitamin B12 deficiency, but this is not a classic presentation of B12 deficiency. There are some things missing here, which will be the subacute combined degeneration of cord. Let's look at the answer here. And the answer is Wernicke's encephalopathy, which will be very unusual given that uh, there will be, um, in addition to having maybe progressive nausea and, and, and vomiting is there because of the, uh, you know, leading to the Wernicke's encephalopathy and vomiting and lack of food and gastric sleep can lead to that. But the vision loss uh, will be very unusual unless it is not a vision loss, but a double vision or blurred vision. But you know, in real life, someone may call that a vision loss. But in, in but her light visual equity is to light perception only, which will be a very unusual presentation presentation for a time in deficiency.